Charts show a graphical representation of our data. Once we've chosen a data source for our chart, we can pick a style and affect how the data is calculated and displayed. We're going to look at four things. Choosing a data source for our chart, how the chart can present different parts of this data, filtering the data before it displays in the chart, and then the different types of charts and their design options. A chart can display data from one of our sheets, or it can derive its data from a relation column. When we choose a sheet as a chart's data source, it will calculate and display all the data for that sheet. However, we can also choose a relation column as the data source. This allows us to make the chart component show the relevant data for the current list item. For example, in this task management app, each user's chart shows their personal stats on their tasks. To do this, we just need to set up a multiple relation column that links all the tasks to their employees. Next, we can add a chart component to our list items and then select that multiple relation as the chart's data source. Whether we choose a sheet or a relation for the source, the chart will default to presenting the data for all the rows based on the columns it thinks are most appropriate. However, we can use the label and quantity properties to change this. For example, suppose we have a sheet which shows orders for a shop. In it, we have four columns, order number, item, units sold, and customer. If we have only the label property connected to the orders column, then the chart will count all of the rows with the same order number in that column and group those in the chart as segments. In other words, the chart shows us that there were two items in order number one and number three, and then one item in all the other orders. If we then set the label to our item column, then the data changes. Now the chart shows how many times a particular item was ordered. We can use any column in our sheet for the label, and depending on our data, some will make sense more than others. Once we've chosen a label, we have the option to add a quantity. For example, currently we have only the label set to the item column, and this shows us how many times an item was ordered. But it doesn't show us how many units were sold. However, if we change the quantity property to our units sold column, then the calculation for the chart changes. We could also change the label to show the name of the customer instead. Now the chart shows how many units that customer bought in total. For example, Sam's order had two types of cakes with a total of 11 units. Playing around with the different combinations of label and quantity allows us to explore and present our data from different angles. If we don't want to show all the data that a data source contains, we can filter what is shown in our chart. For example, going back to our Employees and Tasks app, say we wanted to show all employees' charts with only the stats on the tasks that are not complete. We can add a filter which shows only items where the status is not complete. We can choose to present our data in a number of different chart types. Each of these will also show a collapsible legend. With donut charts, we can show our data in a donut style with an optional total in the center. We can also add a label for the units of that total, which will show underneath. Pie chart shows us the different segments more simply without a total and units. And bar charts show our data in vertical bars along an XY axis. The y-axis will be numerical values from lowest to highest, and the x-axis will be whatever we choose for our label. With bar charts, we can also add another quantity, and this will show another series on the chart. For example, this chart is showing quarterly sales reports for a company. 
Currently it's showing the values from the 2018 column, but we can add more columns to show bars for the other years. When we do this, we see the legend change. Instead of grouping by the label, it now groups by the different quantity sets that we've added. Now we see 2018, 2019, and 2020's quarterly values on the chart. Finally, with each of the chart styles, we can then choose a unique color theme. So that was a look at charts in Glide. We looked at choosing a data source, either a sheet or a relation, presenting our data in different ways by choosing which values show as the chart label and quantity, filtering the data that will be shown in the chart, and customizing a number of design options for each one.